This is the day when we, the church, gather together to remember and mourn the passion and death of Jesus, our Savior. Today, through scripture, and then time allotted for you to reflect and pray, we will walk Jesus' last hours with him. As we watch the images on the screen, we reflect on his pain. We see the burden that he carries, and our heart breaks with his. As we reflect on Jesus dying on the cross, we know that it was our sin that put him there. And we mourn again because of what we have cost him. I pray that as we reflect on these images and again have time to pray together, we will be reminded of the depth of God's love for us and we will commit ourselves again to live holy lives in honor of the one whose name we bear as Christians. The first image we see is Jesus praying in the garden. In Matthew 26, we read these words. Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to them, Stay here while I go and pray over there. When he took Peter, James, and John, he began to feel sad and anxious. And then he said to them, I'm very sad. It is if I'm dying. Stay here and keep alert with me. And then he went a short distance farther and fell on his face and prayed, My father, if it's possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not what I want, but what you want. He came back to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Couldn't you stay alert one hour with me? Stay alert and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. The spirit is eager, but the flesh is weak. A second time he went away and prayed, My father, if it's not possible that this cup be taken away unless I drink it, then let it be what you want. Again he came and found them sleeping. Their eyes were heavy with sleep. But he left them and again went and prayed the same words for the third time. And then he came to his disciples and said to them, Will you sleep and rest all night? Look, the time has come for the Son of Man to be betrayed into the hands of sinful men. Let's go. Look, here comes my betrayer. The second image we see is Jesus being arrested, tried, and sentenced. We read these words in Scripture. Suddenly, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came with a mob carrying swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priest, legal experts, and elders. His betrayer had given them a sign, Arrest the man I kiss, and take him away under guard. As soon as he got there, Judas said to Jesus, Rabbi, and then he kissed him. And then they came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. 
Jesus was brought before the governor Pilate. The governor said, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, That's what you say. But he didn't answer when the chief priests and elders accused him. Then Pilate said, Don't you hear the testimony they bring against you? But he didn't answer, not even a single word. So the governor was greatly amazed. It was customary during the festival for the governor to release to the crowd one prisoner, whomever they might choose. At that time there was a well-known prisoner named Jesus Barabbas. When the crowd had come together, Pilate asked them, Whom would you like me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who you called Christ? He knew that the elders of the priest had handed him over because of jealousy. Barabbas, they replied, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Crucify him. Why, what wrong has he done? asked Pilate. They shouted even louder, Crucify him. Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere and that a riot was starting. So he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It's your problem. All the people replied, Let his blood be on us and on our children. And then he released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus whipped, then handed him over to be crucified. The next image we see is Jesus being stripped of his clothing and crowned with a crown of thorns. Mark tells us in chapter 15, the soldiers led Jesus away into the courtyard of the palace known as the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole company of soldiers. They dressed him up in purple and twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on him. They saluted him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again they struck his head with a stick. They spit on him and knelt before him to honor him. And when they finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him. And then they led him out to crucify him.
Jesus carries his cross. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is why the Father loves me. I give up my life so that I can take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I give it up because I want to. I have the right to give it up, and I have the right to take it up again. I receive this commandment from my Father. Carrying his cross by himself, he went out to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. Matthew 27. As they were going out, they found Simon, a man from Cyrene. They forced him to carry his cross. When they came to the place called Golgotha, they gave Jesus wine mixed with vinegar to drink. But after tasting it, he didn't want to drink it. Jesus is crucified. The soldiers also led two other criminals to be executed with Jesus. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him, along with the criminals, one in his right hand and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. They drew lots as a way of dividing up his clothing. The people were standing around watching, but the leaders sneered at him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself if he really is the Christ sent from God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him. They came up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, If you really are the King of the Jews, save yourself. Above his head was a notice of the formal charge against him. It read, This man is the King of the Jews.
One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminal spoke harshly to the first. Don't you fear God, seeing that you've also been sentenced to die? We are rightly condemned, for we are receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus' mother and aunt and Mary Magdalene stood near the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Jesus dies. It was now about noon, and darkness covered the whole earth until about three o'clock, while the sun stopped shining. Then the curtain in the temple tore down the middle. Crying out in a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. After he said this, he breathed for the last time. That evening, a man named Joseph came. He was a rich man from Arimathea, who had become a disciple of Jesus. He came to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission to take it. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had carved out of the rock. After he rolled a large stone at the door of the tomb, he went away. Mary and Mary Magdalene were there, sitting in front of the tomb. As you continue on this day, 
be mindful that it is Good Friday. Be mindful with the rest of the activities that you do of Jesus' death for you. Be mindful that it was your sin that put him on the cross. But also be mindful of God's rich grace poured out for you. This is the day to give thanks to God for our salvation. This is the day to give thanks to Jesus for his obedience to die on the cross. This is the day to give ourselves wholly to God, to live our life in service to him. God bless you as you continue on with this day. We look forward to worshiping with you in the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday.